Welcome back to Mad Dog Air Guns. Something a little bit special today. Santa was very kind to me at Christmas. You might have heard that in another video that I've put out. We have this. This is... Gamo Hunter 440 AS. Um, it's a 177 pellet rifle. It's brake barrel. Came with a scope. Uh, and it's supposed to be just under 20 joules. I've not zeroed the scope in yet. I should be doing that when I can get outside at the moment. It is so cold out there and muddy. I can't get out onto the range in the wheelchair. So I've set, we've got a little target set up outside. I'm going to put a couple of shots through the chronograph and see what it actually power wise does put out. Uh, I have done a couple of shots. I shot up at the hornet's nest in the tree. That's falling apart a little bit now because uh, obviously the weather's give it a good battering, but I don't think they're up there anymore. <laughs> but um, I, so I have put a few shots for it this morning and um, I'm quite surprised actually how much of a sort of it's not like shotgun or rifle recoil, but for an air gun, it's got quite a bit of kick in the shoulder. Um, so I'm ho holding out good things for the uh, power. Uh, we're allowed up to 20 joules in France, so air rifles or, hand or p air pistols, uh, there's no limit for, and there's, there isn't a different limit for that, the air pistols to air rifles, once you get over 20 joules it then becomes a category C which you'll need a license for, either a ha uh, chasse hunting license or a, they call it a tier sportive basic shooting license for a gun club, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, now I went for the 177 over the 22 because the 177 pellet tends to fly a lot straighter. I've got a .20 Benjamin Sheridan which is sort of the best of both worlds, it's not 2.2 and it's not 177, it's obviously somewhere in between. Uh, that you've got sort of the power of the 2.2 and almost the straight trajectory of the 177. But this one, you could have it in, I think you could have it in 177 or 2.2. But anyway, this is the 177. Uh, we've got some Diablo 500s. So we're going to put those through it. I'm going to crack a couple of shots through the chronograph and we'll see what, what it actually puts out. And uh, we'll have a little bit of a shoot out on these targets outside here. I'm, it's not zeroed in. Um, I could take the scope off because I don't really need the scope because it's only about eight meters away. But I will just use the scope and see where it is hitting on the uh, target out there. So let's crack on with the chronograph first. Right, we're at 0.47 of pellet. Gonna try a different pellet, which is 0.49 of a gram. So we'll try that. It's not too bad. Uh, it's less than 18 joules. Uh, it is advertised as 19.9. You're never gonna get what the manufacturers say it's gonna be. But having said that, this is a brand new gun. It's not been broken in yet. So I've only put 10, 15 pellets for it so far. So we're going to uh, see what I can hit on that little target. It's about eight to 10 meters away, so, and the scope's not zeroed in, but we'll see what we can do. So let's have a quick look outside.
So that's it for today, shooting this out the window. The target's a little bit low and I can't rest on the thing because I'm sort of like shooting like that <laughs> to hit the target. I've tried shooting the hornet's nest but of course the scope's not zeroed in. I don't know if, where it's going. Uh, it's a, quite a long way over, it's about 100 metres. Um, but yeah, well, I'll get out to shooting on the range and um, maybe get a rifle rest or something, something set up so that I, I'm not waving about all over the place. <laughs> I think the gun's accurate, I'm not. Um, yeah, I've been shooting the tree stump out there and those little targets down there. Um, now, some of the uh, the reviews have said that the trigger's quite a bit on this, you know, it's quite heavy and it's very jerky. I have noticed that as I'm trying to squeeze the trigger, it does pull it off of uh, target a little bit. Um, they do do a aftermarket trigger for this, a Charlie de Tuna um, trigger but for now this is going to be perfect we're going to get the scope zeroed in properly on the range and um, yeah see what we can do it. I will check the power again um, after I've put a good couple of hundred shots through it and uh, oh, you know because it's, it's spring operated you know it could just want a bit of bedding in and it might get a bit more powerful but uh, I'm still quite happy, 18 joules. Uh, the legal limit in France is a little bit higher than uh, the UK. I think they're only allowed 12 foot pounds. I think we can have about 14.8, which is 20 joules. But yeah, fantastic bit of kit. And it's really, really nice. Well built, well finished. Uh, no sharp edges or anything like that on it. It's sort of like got a plasticized cover on the barrel. It's got this weird thing in the end, I'm not sure what that's for. But uh, it has got quite a bit of a kick to it for a, a brake barrel air rifle. Um, so not shotgun or rifle recoil, but uh, it's got recoil nonetheless. Whereas I think like the PCPs and that don't have that so much. But I quite like it when I'm shooting to have a bit of a... You know you've got a gun in your hand, don't you, then? If it's putting a bit of recoil into your shoulder. But uh, yeah, fantastic bit of kit. So thanks again Santa, or aka The Hobbit. Um, we're gonna have quite a bit of fun with this. So this is just a bit of a, not an unboxing, but uh, this is a new, new gun on the fleet sort of thing. <laughs> in the collection. Goes nicely in the gun cabinet over here, look. We've got uh, a rifle cabinet and a handgun cabinet. Now I don't need secure storage for these because they're classed as category D in France. Um, you don't need any special requirements for uh, storing your class D weapons. But it's like I said to Tina the other day, if I'm doing a lot of shooting and especially with the black powder and the blank firing gun it's quite loud and if somebody happens to complain to the gendarmes when we get a visit, even though I don't need to keep them locked up, if it shows that we're responsible keeping all our weapons in a gun safe locked up we're all organized um it'll just work in our favor plus it keeps things nice neat and tidy so that's the idea of those uh, they're not fixed down at the moment because uh, obviously the man cave needs sorting out first but they will be they'll get fixed down to the floor to the wall and uh, we'll have some proper secure storage as i said i don't need it but um it's just the way we've just chosen to uh, to do it, just on the off chance. But uh, yeah, fantastic bit of kit. <laughs> so yeah, there'll be some more videos on the range shooting with this and all the other ones um, when the weather cheers up a little bit because it is, it is cold out there at the minute. It's struggling to get to one degree Celsius, which I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but as usual, I'll put the thing across the screen in Fahrenheit and, see, and degrees Celsius. And uh, it is bitterly cold and I don't fancy sitting out there shooting. So we do it from the comfort of our home. <laughs> Luckily, the back of the house is out onto our land uh, and we've got five acres out the back here. Uh, and I think one of the re rules and regulations in France for shooting, um, as long as you're shooting away from houses, you're not allowed to shoot towards them. 
Um, all our neighbours are to the side and the other side of the road, so there's nothing out the back here. An air rifle won't reach to the farm, which is probably a couple of miles away. Um, so we're all good. Thought I'd just clear that up. <laughs> Not that any of you are really in the slightest bit interested, but uh, I'd just like to explain why we do things and you know the reasons behind them. So yeah, fantastic. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.